program, we discuss the widening diplomatic dimensions for Israel, resulting from its normalization of ties with the United Arab Emirates. But the agreement's benefits will certainly extend to other areas. Well, Israeli Health Minister Yuli Edelstein this week announced a cooperation agreement with his Emirati counterpart to strengthen cooperation on pharmaceuticals and medical research. But the deal with the UAE could open, or at least widen, other doors of business opportunity for Israel. Now, that especially includes in East Asia, where powerhouse tiger economies such as Japan and South Korea, heavily dependent on Gulf oil imports, have historically faced pressure from the so-called secondary Arab boycott to limit cooperation and trade with Israel and certain sectors. But how much could that change now? Well, joining us now in studio is Gilad Mayorovic. He is the co-head of the Asia practice at the Herzog, Fox, and Neyman law offer, certainly a top, if not the top law firm in Tel Aviv. Gilad, thanks for joining us. Well, let's talk about that, because we know historically Asia, especially East Asia, Japan, South Korea, have been influenced to some degree by uh, the Gulf states uh, in their dealings with Israel. So how much is that likely to change now? What we see these days is a beautiful domino effect where the change, the change in the environment uh, between Israel and Arab countries affect the business uh, relations between Israel and Asian countries. I'll give you an example. Please. About a year ago, I gave a lecture in Japan as part of a seminar about business collaboration with Israeli companies. At the end of, the lecture, of my lecture, I was approached by a senior manager in one of the leading energy companies in Japan. He told me how much he loves Israel. So I was excited. I wanted to, and I started developing conversation with him about the, uh, the evolving gas industry in Israel and the op enormous opportunities that exist for Japanese companies. And he told me, you know, I really love to, I really would like to come to Israel, but my company will not do business here because we have a lot of business in the Gulf countries and we don't want to compromise that. So now we have a, a very different environment. Add to that the geopolitical change in the region uh, with respect to the uh, US-China trade war. So now, during, because of this trade war, we can expect to see a cool down uh, of the participation of Chinese companies in big projects here in Israel. This is a huge opportunity for Japanese and Korean companies to come in and participate because their biggest competitor is now out of the game or might be out of the game. So we see lots of changes and I think that will bring a lot of impact and the participation of Japanese and, co and Korean companies and potentially other Asian uh, companies in uh, sectors like energy, infrastructure, uh, water desalination, big projects, this could have a huge impact on the economy here. Right. Where is Israel? I mean, certainly Israel has had business with Japan and, and, and South Korea. I mean, you just have to look at the roads and see the cars being driven. But where is it really sort of uh, impacted on Israel and when it comes to dealing with those countries? The fact that it was not able to have any kind of open relations with those, those uh, oil and gas-rich Gulf nations. Yes. So I think uh, th this is kind of a loss for, for the Israeli economy, the fact that some of the major Japanese and Korean conglomerates didn't participate in big projects here in Israel. Usually, you know, you have these days projects in uh, trains, light train, water desalination, gas, uh, sale of power plants, and we usually see the same participants. Israeli companies, some consortium uh, with uh, European companies, and mostly Chinese companies. We haven't seen here Almost never seen here Japanese and Korean companies. Because those, cause, cause, cause those countries, those companies have major, major projects or have had major projects in the Gulf, in the Gulf states. Exactly. And, and just to, to imagine, what would, what would be the result if these companies are coming to Israel? First, you have better competition here. Uh, prices will be much better. Yeah, these companies put a lot of focus on quality. It's very known that Japanese and Korean companies, uh, their products are very, uh, high, has high quality. If those companies are coming in, this could upgrade the market. You have issues such as collaboration with Israeli companies. These companies are not exposed enough to uh, Israeli startups and other companies in this area of, uh, of the, the areas that I mentioned. And the fact that they come into Israel and start to do business here, expose them to the Israeli companies, and those companies can then do business with them in East Asia, 
Maybe even in the Middle East, this can change the whole dynamic here. Right. I've been to Dubai a few times under my U.S. passport, and the business development there, uh, the, uh, the, the opportunities to raise capital from those sovereign funds is tremendous. Is that going to be a big thing for Israel? Even maybe just being at business conferences with certain Asian uh, companies and executives in that, that kind of environment? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we're actually working these days on, on creating these combinations. Uh, on one hand, we have the uh, Asia prong, then we have the Middle East prong, and Israel somewhere in, uh, in between. And we could see this uh, fantastic triangular, which can benefit all the parties. All right. Well, certainly could be a uh, dawning of a, of a new day for uh, Israeli business and, I guess, those law firms that also deal with helping uh, make that business run smoothly. Gilad Mayorovich, thank you for joining us 